Hey guys, so I wanted to make an update on conversion, life, uh, everything. So, sadly, there are things that changed in my life a lot since I went to Israel. And you know, the person that I love, and I know he's the right person, and I know there's no one else that will match him the way I do, and no one else that will match me the way he does, things did, didn't go so well, and then my life also crumbled. So I'm at a crossroads, and the more... <coughs> The more I move towards Judaism, the more I'm rejected in every side, and it's not easy. Going to Israel prompted everyone around me to, you know, the more I become observant, the more things around me shift. And first I was pushed away from my parents, then I was pushed away from my colleagues at school, and now the fact that I went to Israel is making uh, the landlady of my house uh, kicking me out. And she says that she knew the minute I, she saw me light Shabbat candles that I was going to be a hazard. Um, the place I'm taking the course, you know, I never skipped classes and I have colleagues that skipped, you know, that passed their uh, limits of absences and they skipped so many classes they have three hour breaks they don't study they don't do anything and they were allowed to remain I skipped classes one week and I was kicked out for whatever they say I need a psychological assessment because I went to a dangerous country and um, they have been progressively showing very anti-Semitic ideas. And uh, just the fact that I wear a star of David on my neck to them shows um, psychological disturbances. That the fact that I'm embracing a religion, they said if it was just out of love for a man, it would be stupid. But at least you, I, we understand. But you're keeping on with this, even though you're not in a relationship anymore, this is just out of bounds, you are... They do not respect my freedom of religion. First, the, 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 um, they started because I was doing my best to keep kosher, and uh, then they started with the accusations of being a jihadist and Mossad and all these things that make absolutely no sense. Then I am absent for a few days and everything around me crumbles. I come back, uh, my landlady is kicking me out. At school I'm kicked out too just because I went to Israel. Everything around me is shifting and my family is worse off. I used to have someone that supported me and I loved him very much and I don't even have that person anymore. I'm all alone. I have nothing going for me now. And all my efforts, all, everything I've done is basically gone just because I'm Jewish. Well, I'm not Jewish yet, but just because I believe in Hashem and People can't deal with it. And so it's okay for you to be a Catholic and to do idol worship, but the minute you want to be Jewish, you're basically seen as a threat in your own country. Just because I went to Israel, everything around me shifted. Everything shifted. And uh, the landlady even was worse because she is... Um, holding on to my money uh, that I paid, because you have to pay some caution mo money. And she says that, uh, you know, her washing machine broke up, broke down and um, 
one of uh, the girls had her clothes um, ruined and she says that uh, she need we um, you know all that that I need to pay for the clothes it was her washing machine that broke down it was the girl's clothes that broke down the, mach the machine and it's my money going for it and she wants me to give more money and I need to leave by the end of the month. Of course, my father even said some lies to her. So it's even worse. And I used, you know, she was always threatening me, saying that you shouldn't go to Israel. He's going to dump you. He's not serious about you. There, you know, Jews are not serious. And he probably speaks to a lot of ladies and. Now, when I came back, she just said, you know, um, I should have thought before going to Israel if I didn't want to be kicked out of the house. What kind of thing is that? So I brought this upon myself just for going to Israel. They said, it's not, it's not, um, it's not a good thing. It's, uh, it's really upsetting and I lost everything in a little over a week and <laughs> I even lost the trust of the most important person in the world to me <laughs> and this is not easy uh, but uh, anyway so um, going to Israel made things harder not only because of this but also now that I'm back here you know before I didn't know what I was missing and when I was in Israel I realized that that's where I belong and the people have the same values they share the same ideas the the community is what I hoped I could find in my country one day the kind of morals, the kind of ideas, the kind of family structure, the kind of, you know, and especially going to shul every Shabbat, um, going to the morning service, going to the evening service, having Shabbat dinners and lunch and Haftalah with the families, you know, having people with real morals and values and getting close to Hashem and, you know, for once not being considered a freak for not believing in Jesus, not being considered a freak for remaining abstinent and n not uh, having relationships until your 30s because you believe in marriage and you believe in true family values you know things that here are seen as abnormal and it's, uh, it's hard so there are also a few things I am now able to say the brahas properly I am able to pray properly. I learned finally how to read the Hebrew vowels, which was something I was struggling because on the internet you can't really find something that helps you a lot with that. I'm sorry. I'm not sleeping. I'm not able to eat. I'm really in a state that, you know, I'm alone. I'm not talking to anyone. And... And, uh, so yeah, but, um, that's why I'm really sleepy because I can't sleep. I, I need answers. I don't have answers. And I've been praying to Hashem so much. And it's just like I have no rest anymore. I... I 
basically like I'm being pushed out out of everyone's lives and like I'm not compatible yet with Jewish people but I'm too Jewish for non-Jewish people and I don't belong anywhere and you know I could deal if I still had the trust um, of doesn't matter it's but yeah so there are other things that I'm going to change um, because I may actually have Jewish origins, I am no longer eating anything that isn't prepared by me, even things that have kosher ingredients. Um, because I may actually have Jewish ancestry, and uh, on my mother's side especially. So, um... These are things I should avoid at all costs, uh, eating things that are not cooked by Jewish people. Uh, so, even though there is no certainty, I could actually be Jewish and it will explain a lot. So, um, yeah, so that's uh, another thing besides eating only kosher ingredients. I am not eating anything that was cooked in non-kosher utensils, non, no, utensils that had contact with non-kosher foods, um, and uh, restaurant food or anything. So I'm not eating anyway. So, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter at this point. I try to eat, but I can't. It's like I'm suffocating. I am literally suffocating. I have nothing. I've lost everything. And now, you know, I just coming back from Israel, I realized I know why it's never fit in here. It's never my place to begin with. And I can't even go to shul here. I have nothing here. I have... I have no way to go to Israel now. And the one person that he used to encourage me, I destroyed everything. I don't even know how. Just by existing, I don't know. And I will just Second time talked. I did something the second time I talked to that person. I don't know. I just ruined everything. So, yeah, I'm also losing a lot of weight. Like, seriously, I am. I went from 88 kilos before going to Israel to. Oh no, the missionaries again. So I went literally from 88 kilos to 75 kilos now. I don't know. Since going to Israel, I lost a lot of weight. <sighs> Will these missionaries leave me alone? So, yeah, I lost a lot of weight. I have no... You know, it's like, it's incredible the amount of weight I lost just since going to Israel. And I'm not even doing anything. I'm not, I just feel like I'm suffocating. Like, my body is rejecting everything. I, it's like my soul is crushed somehow. I... I wish I knew how to deal with this. I just in ten days I will have to leave this place and have nowhere to go. Well I'll probably have to go to my mother's but since 
my conversion, my relationship with her is even worse. She's Catholic and I don't know. I just wish I could go to Israel again. Anyway, this is it for today and I talk in the next video. Bye. With Hat Hashem, please talk probably sort things out. I didn't want to take advantage of anyone. I I don't know what to do. I'm alone. And I don't even know what I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. If only I could just talk. I could just prove myself and I'm a good person, I have a great heart, and I don't want to take advantage of people when I say things. It's usually because I'm concern and I want to help and try to give good advice to people and I'm sorry everyone it's just it's so hard so hard and how will I even complain about anti-semitism in a country where people don't even care. I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, everyone. I just needed to talk. I have no one to talk. I ruined the one thing I had in the world that made me happy. I hope Hashem hears me. But so far, it seems like I don't even know how to pray because my prayers help me hurt. It's like I don't deserve to be hurt. I don't deserve to be friends with, I don't deserve anything. <laughs> I don't know what I did that Tuesday. I don't know what I did. I don't know what I did that Tuesday to ruin everything. I just wanted to know what I did that Tuesday that ruined everything. I don't know.